I don't know how many of you have been following this David Zaslav Coyote versus Acme situation, but unsurprisingly, it's gotten to a point where a lot of people are taking sides, and it doesn't seem like it's so much because they want to see the film. It's all being used as just another chess piece in this pop culture war that plagues film discussion now. Some people have their pitchforks and torches out looking to find David Zaslav and destroy their monster. And on the other side, some people are bending over backwards to be corporate apologists. As always, we are going to take a look at this situation and see if we can't make sense of it in a more level-headed way. Let's discuss. I watch so you don't have to. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. So Coyote vs. Acme is an unreleased, completed film based on the iconic Looney Tunes characters. The movie was intended to be a live-action animated hybrid that was scheduled to be released a handful of times. But the film was ultimately cancelled and this caused a significant amount of online outrage, and maybe rightfully so. The reaction did cause WB to rethink their decision initially. And instead of just canceling the film, they wanted to give the filmmakers an opportunity to shop it around to other distributors. The issue seems to be that even though the film was finished, WB didn't have the money to cover the cost for distributing the film. So if in fact they could find a willing party who would cover those costs, they would sell the film's rights to the company and allow the film to finally be released. Well, it appears that WB now has the desire to move on from this whole situation, as Coyote vs. Acme is now expected to be shelved and deleted forever. Reportedly, WB wanted between 75 and 80 million for the film and rejected offers from Netflix, Amazon, and Paramount, and even refused to let any of them submit a counter offer. WB will most likely scrap the film and use it as a tax write off. So this decision has once again sparked outrage among seemingly everyone, as the finality of this decision seems to be once again rubbing people the wrong way. As you all know, I stand with fandoms getting what they want first and foremost, because without fans, all of these studios and franchises would not exist. And far too often, it seems like studios and their army of apologists are more content with insulting fans than they are pleasing them. Besides all of that though, I also stand with creatives. And when I say creatives, I mean people who were hired by a studio to execute a singular vision and are hopefully given enough creative freedom to create something memorable. Because it's all part of the plan. And everything that WB is doing with Coyote vs. Acme goes against that. First, you have the creative team, who is obviously very passionate about this project, going as far to say publicly that they were excited about the film, and it felt like the film captured the voice of the Looney Tunes that we love in a way that none of the other feature versions have ever done. Now, having not actually seen the film, we cannot confirm or deny that that was the case. But as someone who grew up watching and loving the Looney Tunes, a creative saying something like this is music to my ears. Because in a lot of ways I do feel like WB has completely wasted this iconic brand. Perhaps they feel like the material is outdated, I'm not really sure. But outside of the original Space Jam, WB really hasn't done anything with this brand since then that is worth talking about. A damn thing. Which is not all that surprising when you take into consideration that they have a track record of underutilizing and misunderstanding the properties that they own. So bottom line, this is unfortunate for the people who worked hard to bring this film to life. And it's unfortunate for Looney Tunes fans, new and old, who might have actually got something worthwhile this time. And I say might because we all know that nothing is guaranteed creatively when it comes to Warner Brothers. Which brings me to my next point, and this goes out to the people who are trying to use this situation as their battle cry to get David Zaslav removed from his position. Because I'm here to tell you that your outrage will most likely be falling on deaf ears. Nobody should be surprised that David Zaslav made this decision. He's not the first person to do it. WB is not the first studio to do it. 
and they will not be the last. David Zaslav, as a businessman, is approaching this from a business perspective. When has any modern studio executive put artistic integrity ahead of turning a profit? I can't say for sure, but the examples of that happening have to be few and far between. Whether we like it or not, the film industry is a business first and foremost. And the desire to create art that people actually care about has taken a backseat to that. And to be clear, and you should all know this if you've been watching me for any amount of time, I'm not saying that that's right. Because ironically, I would argue that poor creative decisions or a lack of focus on creativity oftentimes ends up being bad for business. The problem is that these studios don't seem to understand that those two things go hand in hand most times. Why do you think we are now seeing companies like Disney talking about scaling back on the amount of projects they produce and placing more of a focus on the quality of those projects? My, how the tables have turned. Because the quantity over quality, business-minded approach hasn't been as successful as it's been in the past. I do wish that more studios realize the importance of putting creatives in the right position to succeed. But if we are being honest with ourselves, WB is one of the absolute worst studios at doing that. They have a history of meddling in the creative process and ruining franchises because of it, while also hiring the wrong people for the wrong reasons to fix their self-inflicted problems. Which brings me to the other side of this argument, and that, of course, is people who are making excuses for WB. It never ceases to amaze me how people on the internet will defend the business decisions of a major corporation as if they themselves are getting a chunk of the profits. Unless you actively work for WB, you shouldn't give a flying f about their financial situation. It's true. I mean, you can talk about it. We all can talk about it. But when it comes right down to it, you gain absolutely nothing from trying to defend their shrewd business decisions. And to me, that's exactly what I mean when I call some people corporate apologists. And much to my surprise, a majority of the people defending Zaslav in this situation are coming from the anti-Hollywood movement. It's kind of ironic when you consider that a lot of these people make their living talking about how everything coming out of Hollywood sucks. But like in any situation, we have a bit of selective outrage going on here. And a lot of people feel the need to be contrarians rather than simply telling the truth. Is David Zaslav not a part of this Hollywood machine that you claim to hate so much? I guess we are going to look past that because of reasons. It's very hypocritical. And it's why I can't take a movement like that seriously anymore because these people literally stand for nothing. You're pathetically predictable. One of the biggest defenses I hear in regards to this movie being canceled is that it probably wasn't very good to begin with. Now that may be the case. Let's face it, the last Looney Tunes movie we got, Space Jam A New Legacy, was a complete abomination. And I think we all dodged a bullet when it came to the Batgirl film being cancelled, because everything about it made it seem unwatchable. But when it came to this project in particular, Coyote vs. Acme, we as the general public have very little to go off of, because not a lot of information has been released about the project. And I don't exactly have a lot of faith in Zaslav, or WB in general, to be a good judge of quality in their current state. Plus, a report came out today that Zaslav himself never actually watched the film he is now intent on deleting. Does it really help the case of people who are claiming this is a quality controlled decision? Oh, there's a big surprise! So are we to believe that Zaslav heard that this film wasn't going well and then decided to cancel it? Here's a question, where was that level of quality control when The Flash was being produced. Oh, that's right, you trusted the head of your new DC on film division, who claimed that that film was the best superhero film ever made. And these are the people that the apologists want me to have faith in. Let's not forget, you can only ride that Barbie bandwagon for so long, because the rest of WB's 2023 was a disaster. That is one big pile of shit. Bottom line, I do think it's unfortunate that this film is never going to be released 
even if I do understand from a business perspective why it isn't. But as a person who consumes content and has nothing to gain financially, the business side of this discussion means less than nothing to me. I do believe that moves like this set a bad precedence because it makes your studio look less desirable to potential filmmakers who might be looking for a place to execute their own new vision. Maybe this is why more and more people seem to be avoiding WB in favor of other studios and places where creative freedom still matters. Y'all be cool. Shut up.